Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of the Q&A sessions. We used to do this um, maybe a year ago was the last one, last time we did it, but I thought I'd bring this back. We're doing it a little bit different this time. We got Debbie with us. We used to have someone that came up and asked a bunch of questions, but I thought we'd just get on here and uh, answer people's questions. How are you, Debbie? I am well. I'm looking forward to it. Love that we get to share, you know, some of our journey with other people and the, some of the things that we did to kind of move through the things that people are actually, you know, going through right now. So, yeah, glad to be here, Rodney. Excited. Yeah. It's, it's so it's so difficult to find your way. It's it's such a kind of closed off way of life. And it's like you just get tossed out. Right. And and people, even people coming out of prison sometimes have a hard time acclimating because they're so yes. used to things being so set. And um, they, it's institutionalized. We get institutionalized too, being in an organization, right? So yeah. we got to learn our way around uh, being outside of it. You know, um, Debbie, what would you say was some things that you had to overcome when you first left? Um, when I left, I think the first thing I had to really consider is I don't care what they think about me. I just, I just had to let that go because I knew that people wouldn't understand my reasons for leaving. And I didn't really give any reasons for leaving. So I, I went through this thing of, they probably think that, you know, I'm crazy or I'm gonna turn into an apostate or all these different things. And I really had to let go what other people thought about me because the only thing that really mattered to me was what I was gonna do once I left. That was it, that was it. Yeah, just yeah. just accepting that they're not of your new world that you're creating, right? Yeah. What they think about you really doesn't matter. And when you doesn't get matter. over that, it really helps. You know, for me, what was what was hard is I, I think losing the community. You know, mm -hmm. I was I was one of those kind of popular witness kids, right? I I was the one that always got things popping, and um, trying to find my way. I mean, mm -hmm. making making friends wasn't hard for me, but Finding community, like when the holidays would come, Thanksgiving, how, how do I get an invite? <laughs> <laughs> how do I get in with the people? I wanted to get invited to stuff and and try to figure that out, you know. So I remember joining like these different little uh, country clubs and, and things where people were just the tennis clubs just to play tennis with somebody, trying to find my way in with people. So that, that was a tough one for me. I, I remember... Uh, Big holidays at first, the first year or two were, were tough, like Thanksgiving, where everybody's doing something. Because even the witnesses, they'll have a get together. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you know, don't do it on Thursday or Friday. They get together and yeah. everybody's doing something, right? And I just felt like I'm the only one not doing anything. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the comments that were posted on a post I made. I think it was last week where I asked people, What do you struggle with? Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of response, and I thought it would be just nice to sit down and the two of us just kind of give our take and maybe some advice on some of these things that people are struggling with. Because it's it's not just one person. Everything I ask, is, there's going to be a whole lot of people dealing yeah. with the same thing, right? Yeah. And okay. that's understandable. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so we have Heidi. Mm -hmm. She said uh, what she struggles with is watching the news and feeling like, oh, man. This is prophesied. <laughs> when the Ukrainian-Russian war started, I really struggled with the King of the North BS. <laughs> my brain does not know what is actually happening. However, in my house, the world news was a huge part of the brainwashing and fear mongering we would tout at people at the doors. Mm -hmm. It's a slow process, but I'm healing and trying to take things uh, at face value now instead of reading into everything. Okay, okay, so I'll let you go first. You know, <clears throat> when we think something, the way our minds work, when we have a belief, our minds are looking to validate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many times have we heard this? I mean, I've been hearing this since I was born. You know, when I was a, a little bitty guy and the Vietnam War was going in 1975 and the Cold War in the 80s, you know, this isn't new. You know, when COVID happened, that's the end, right? But you had the Spanish flu and the Black Plague, and you've always had things. This isn't new. Yeah. Right? But when the mind is programmed looking for evidence, trying to connect the dots at what, what's going on, 
Um, you will stay in a state of fear. This isn't new, and it's not going away. There's, there's conflict. We live on planet Earth, and planet Earth does have conflict. Uh, so we we must realize that this isn't new. Uh, fear. The witnesses run on fear. That's how you control people. You keep them in a state of fear, so you got to grab on to this thing that's going to save you. It wants to be your hero of the very thing they're creating, the fear that they're creating. Mm -hmm. Um, just understand that this is nothing new and um, it's been going on from the beginning of time. Right. So try your best to, I, I like to say, try to avoid things that, that create fear in your life. You mm -hmm. know? Try to focus on other things. Um, but uh, you have to know it's just not true. <laughs> it's just not true. They, they they have not prophesied everything. They've been wrong one hundred percent of their properties, one hundred percent of their future, their fortune telling has been wrong. Yeah, so no reason they're going to start being right now. So. Okay, so if I were talking to Heidi, right, because she asked that question, I would ask her, "Where did you hear that kind of rhetoric?" Right. Think of the environment that you heard, like you're saying, that was to like make you be afraid, right? Not only make you be afraid. And the strange thing is, it's it's supposed to actually make you not afraid because, you know, the whole witness idea is, oh, that's the beginning of the Great Tribulation and this is going to end and we're going to end up, you know, surviving in paradise. But why are we afraid? Because underneath that strange message is the fear mongering that you're talking about. So I would tell Heidi, just remember where you heard that. And when you look at things in the world and you see these things happening, just take a breath and go, okay, I don't have to be in fear about this. What I also can do is I can look for the good things that are happening in the world, right? Because we never heard that other part of it as witnesses. We only heard wars, reports of wars and all those kind of things and earthquakes. Kind of, all of those things are part of the JW programming. And so if you remember that when you when you see these things and you feel that fear coming up, just remember where you learned that in that environment. But now you're in the wide world and there are a lot of things that are happening, but they're also really, really good things that are happening. And if you if you seek those things, you'll see them. Right. And it will minimize, I feel like, that fear when those other things show up because you'll just be neutral, a little bit more neutral to it and go, I can breathe through this. This does not mean the end is coming and I'm going to lose my life. No. As someone who's been out here, what, 13 years, I've seen a whole bunch of things and I just go, look at that insanity. Look at what people are doing to each other. And somewhere, someone is holding a space for that situation to be for people to feel in that situation that they're not alone and they're not in the situation alone, like the whole world is with them, holding them on both sides. You don't have to feel the fear and dip, and dip into it and let it take you down the road. Use that fear to think about how those people need your support and peace right now. That's just what I would say to Heidi. And I don't know if that helps, but... You mentioned something that was interesting too. Right? We, we get to focus on what we want to focus on, and one thing when you're a witness, they they never told you about the good thing, good things that other people are doing, right? Anything good was was in their organization. They didn't talk about all the wonderful it's things like, that, oh my God. That, that people are doing, and that was one thing. Is when I left the witnesses and I, I met some incredible people that are doing amazing things, things we never did when we were witnesses. Yes, and, and you will never hear of that. So. Just try and focus on 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 the good that's happening because there's a whole lot a lot of good, good that's that's going on and we get to focus on what we want to focus yeah. on. Awesome. Okay, so we got Melissa that said that says that finding her true self. That's what mm -hmm. she's struggling with. Finding my true self. I don't know who I am yet. I had been force fed to be a specific type of person, wife, friend, mother. I feel like I've put on a knack for my whole life. I was born in and left at 39. I just turned 48 and I'm struggling with knowing who I really am. 
I feel like I'm holding back, but also afraid to let myself go. So I'll let you start this. Mm-hmm. That's a be- that's actually a beautiful journey. I think for me, how I navigated that. Well, who, and what's her name? Melissa. Melissa. I always tell people, remember, you, you probably don't remember when you're born, but you can still look at your baby pictures and imagine that person, right? that innocent, beautiful child before our parents started telling us about all this other stuff, right? And these ideas about when you grow up, you have to be a wife and a mom and all these different ideas. But when you look at your baby self, your baby self is actually that part of you that is holding all of your true expression of yourself, right? And so there is this, actually there is this, um, therapy called parts therapy, where the therapist helps you identify like your seven-year-old self, like what, what, think of your seven-year-old self and have a conversation with that seven-year-old kid, right? You may not remember her or him, but just kind of like as an adult, give that seven-year-old self or that five-year-old self or however old that child is, what you would say to that child as an adult, right? So you're actually giving that to yourself. So I would say to myself, little Debbie, you know what? You're going to do some really amazing things. We don't know what they look like yet, but I trust that they're going to show up and it's going to come from your full authentic self. So just know now I'm coming back into the past and I'm telling you this, you're going to know who you are, right? Seeding that inner child that the parents didn't get, didn't know either and put stuff on that child. So that's the first thing I would say, So connect with that little kid. The second thing is, there is this question that Deepak Chopra asks in his lectures, and it is, um, who am I? It's actually three questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What do I want? And they're internalized questions because, especially if we don't know who we are, that part of us that is who we are, right, will answer back. Right. But it requires us to kind of sit a little bit with ourselves. Right. And like, who am I? Like. Outside of all of these labels and ideas, right, that I have adopted or people have projected onto me, who am I? Like, OK, I'm I'm really fun. I, I really like people. Um, I, I'm a little bit of a daredevil. I'm kind of funny. I'm a very good person. I'm a kind person. So it's kind of like, who, who, who am I? And I think when we start to ask that question internally, that's when that authentic self starts to answer back and say, this is who you are. And it takes time because of all the years that we have put all these other ideas on ourselves, it takes a while for us to actually start hearing our true authentic self starting to like, um, rise up, right? Um, Self-talk is really good. I'm a big advocate for self-conversation. People think you shouldn't talk to yourself, you know, but I'm like, no, yourself is in there and that's the best conversation you're going to have. So if you want to know who you are, start talking to yourself and talk to yourself in loving, kind, compassionate ways. And when you recognize you're beating that self up, just recognize and say, okay, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to damage that self anymore. I'm not going to hurt that self. I'm going to love on that self. And I think when we start to internalize that experience, that authentic self starts to kind of like, oh, here I am. Here I am. I'm ready to like be. So that's just something I would share with Melissa. Start, start and have that inner conversation because that, that self is there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that conversation with your younger self, there, there's a video on YouTube I, I watched a long time ago. It's You can look it up. It was uh, Kyler Perry speaking to his younger self. Yes, I saw that. That's was, that was a great video where he, yeah. he lets him know it's going to be okay. He had a rough childhood and lets mm-hmm. his, his younger self know it's going to be okay. I would say really open yourself up to learning new things, delve into personal development, read just just become open to information and you're gonna find that some things really resonate with you Mm -hmm. you know we're not here to tell anybody which role they should take but 
you're going to find something that resonates. You know, what, what really opened me up back in the day is um, I, I picked up a book that just resonated with me. I was 25 years old, 25 or 26 years old. And I was taking a plane ride and it was a book from, you know, a very famous um, speaker and coach today. Right. But he wasn't so famous back then, but he used to be on infomercials a lot. And I saw the book and I, could not put it down because he's articulating things I felt. Yes. I didn't know how to say. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's reading my mind. This is what uh, this. You know, I wanted to scream, this, this, <laughs> this, this is it, right? It was just resonating so much. And just allowing yourself to learn. Um, I remember one time I was I was doing a job. For the business I used to have, again, I must have been about 30 at this time. And and this was in the in the jungles of Maui. I used to live in Maui. And this beautiful little house on a big property, little house. And this lady came out and she was like a goddess. And she <laughs> there and started talking to me and asking me questions, questions I never thought about. And I was just stretching the job. I, I stretched that job a good hour and a half longer than it was. <laughs> Because I just enjoyed talking to her so much. And it was just, and then later I started meeting more and more people who had a a mindset that resonated with mine. And I started recognizing this. So I started going in a particular path that resonated with me. So I would say really open up to information, become a blank slate. Uh, don't feel like everything that you that you entertain has to be your truth. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of times people leave the witnesses they, they go oh if this isn't the truth then what is that's one of the first things <laughs> and no don't don't go thinking you're going to go find the truth tomorrow just be open see what resonates with you and then you start connecting to that inner voice because that inner voice gets really dull when you're a witness because they keep telling you the heart is treacherous the heart is treacherous don't listen to it and you mm -hmm. get so disconnected from self and as Debbie said, your true self was was radiant as a little toddler. They gravitate gravitate exactly to what they love. If they don't like a food, they spit it right out. <laughs> if, they don't, if they like playing with you know blocks, they'll play with blocks for hours. If they like playing with dolls, they'll brush the doll's hair for for hours. If they like yeah. playing with balls and sports, they'd, they're outside for hours. So, you know, you get a chance to rediscover the child within. And and see what it is. What what do you gravitate toward? Mm -hmm. You get a lot of clues. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And also start meditating, spending time by yourself, meditating, being quiet with yourself. If you don't know how to meditate, just walk in nature. Just be with yourself. Thoughts will just pop up. Mm -hmm. it, you you'll start having this inner dialogue that just starts running, <laughs> like somebody's in you talking to you. Mm -hmm. Get comfortable mm -hmm. with that. I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to add too, like when, when you are exploring all these different ideas and things that come up, there's a word that I always use is it's neutrality. Like when I'm reading something, right. That could be new. I am just reading it. I'm not trying to form an opinion about it. I'm just mm -hmm. neutrally taking this information and I'm feeling how it feels. I call this my gut. My gut knows everything. Right. And if, if my gut goes, no, I'm like, okay, that's good. It doesn't resonate. That's fine. But it might resonate for somebody else. It just doesn't resonate for me. Right. And I feel when I taught myself that I could always hear, yes, immediately like this resonates. Like you were saying, you, somebody gave you a book and you read and you're like, this is what, this is in my head already. <laughs> right. In my, in my beingness already. So I think if you're just kind of like reading something and if, if it doesn't click, it's okay. You, you said something interesting also. Resonate. Mm -hmm. You don't have to reject to accept what resonates. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. It's just, I this resonates with me. I'll just leave this here. Mm -hmm. it, it's like food. I'm just going to leave that on the plate. <laughs> now I like that, pushing it around. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you might develop a taste for it later. Mm -hmm. There's foods that were prepared a little bit different. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> Put that mint jelly on the lamb. Okay. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's an acquired taste, Rodney. Right, right. So 
what I'm saying is it, what resonates with you now. There are some things that I accept now that mm-hmm. I did not accept, you know, seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense to me now. I, the dots connect. So be okay with what resonates and, and just, just take what fits. Take, take yes. what's on the plate you want to you wanna munch on. <laughs> You'll find your way slowly. Yes. Okay, we have Liana. Liana says, within the organization, you have a ready-made family. Yeah. As a new mom, that co- that community could have been extremely helpful. Yes, I have built my small tribe since leaving. However, it's a small tribe, and most have moved to, to different states. I feel alone. Yeah, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. I'll let you start with that. Go ahead. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is if I am wanting to experience something and outside of me, I can't experience it, then I start to create it. And it could very well be that Leanne, is it Leanne, Mm -hmm. is going to be this amazing person that organizes mom 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 fun days or kid days or something like that to kind of create a community of moms i've seen this happen before with other people right and they put one little thing on on facebook maybe or they put it out in their neighborhood that they're organizing you know a fun day with their kids for the moms and this is how that community grows because if you're seeking something outside that means the nugget of its creation is in you and so that's an opportunity for you to go, well, what, how could I create something that I want to experience that could also help other people, right? Because yes, those ready-made communities are no longer there, right? And they're not as healthy either. So you get to create from this new space something that is not only healthy for yourself and for others, right? Because sometimes putting yourself in those spaces, you really don't know, but if you create, then the people that are going to like resonate again with you show up. That's just something that popped into my head because I don't have kids. So I don't know, Rodney, maybe you can give like a little bit more insight on that because I don't have kids. I have plants (laughs) (laughs) and I find the plant people. Well, first of all, uh, understand that the community was one of the best parts of being a witness. And that's why people have a hard time leaving. Yes, But it's not normal. That's not most people's reality. Mm-hmm. You know, religions like the Witnesses, Mormons, same thing. They have a very strong community. You go to Salt Lake City, it's well, Mormon, Mormon, <laughs> Mormon galore, right? It's just, yes. it's, but it's tight, and I understand why people love it. You, you don't have to. The things that Debbie was saying, you don't have to learn when you're a witness because you, it's ready made. If you move to a new city and and you go to a new congregation, everybody's excited to have you. People want to take you out to lunch. You got a hundred new f- friends. I not only that, let me let me just say this. Not only that, when you go to another country, mm-hmm. you got friends. It's like, yep. but you don't meet anybody. You don't. You're just meeting the same. You're meeting the same versions of yourself as a JW. Go ahead. Right. I'm sorry. Right. So so it's it's we can become lazy about it, right? If we, when we travel, oh, I got friends in California. I've got friends in, in Texas. I've got, and they call them the friends, right? So we didn't really have to learn how to make friends. We had a ready-made community. Now we have to learn how to do that. So here's a suggestion for you. Um, Every morning I take a walk, about a 45 minute walk. I got a nice trail behind where I live. And uh, there's always several moms with strollers early in the morning with their kids. And and a lot of those people have been doing that for a long time. And there's just one little spot that they just all kind of clump together and, and, and have conversation and and their friendships are based on that walk. So I would say look for things that other young mothers are doing because they have the same issue as you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? I mean, these are young people that had had a child. This takes them out of their circle of friends that they were running with before they had a child because their friends probably aren't in the exact same situation. Maybe they're, they're not, uh, maybe they're not working while they're taking care of a young child, but put yourself in spaces where you might run into people like that and go out of your way. 
Like if you were on a, a daily walk in your exercise in and, and seeing other young mothers, stop. Introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Make friends because they're looking for friends too. Mm -hmm. They're looking for friends with young babies and, and toddlers. They're looking for community also. So put yourself in situations that you're going to meet those kinds of people so you have a community and you'll come right up with them, you know, grade school, right, right up, right up yes. through the, the ranks with them. And I, I've seen this, you know, when mm -hmm. my kids were small. So uh, just put yourself out there. And, and again, we didn't have to do that as witnesses. You know, there was always somebody having a baby as a witness. There's always, <laughs> there's always that community. But now you got to go out of your way. So put yourself in situations where you can meet new people. And that suggestion is a great one. Get up early, go find somewhere where people are walking. You'll find women uh, that are walking with strollers and you can um, you can find your your, your tribe there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got El, my friend out of Australia. El says her issue is loneliness. Mm -hmm. I chose not to have children. And I believe subconsciously it was because of the conditioning about raising kids in the time of the end. I often find myself feeling like I'm alone, a lone satellite going through life. I keep myself busy, but it's always there. Okay, so Debbie, you, you'll relate to this one. It's yeah, single, no kids. Yeah. Um, I. So this is this stuff I did that really helped me a lot. I decided to just get out of the house. I would just go out the house and I would find safe places like a coffee shop or a restaurant that had a patio. And I would just take my book. I always have a book or a journal and I would just hang out in people spaces and, and do it regularly. Like I go to the same Mexican restaurant every single Friday. And I kid you not, somebody walked up to me and said, okay, who are you? And that's how it started. Right. Those two friends, Nia and Andy, turned into like about what a year later, 10 people hanging out every single Friday, having these amazing conversations, like minded people. But I had to get out with the intention that I was going to meet people eventually. Right. That was just the way I did it. It seems very daunting and it can seem very intimidating, but you don't have to talk to anybody. You really don't. All you got to do is just be in the space with the people energy and half the time you end up observing and learning a lot about people and yourself if you sit in those spaces with yourself. So I, I would say places where there are people. I think coffee shops are safe. Really nice. Go have breakfast by yourself regularly at the same place, the same time every week. You will find people because other people are also doing it. Mm -hmm. And they'll notice you, and that's how commute, that's how connections grow with people. I would go to a coffee shop with the intention of not wanting to talk, and someone would talk to me because I was creating this intention to broaden my space and just to meet people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just something mm -hmm. I that came up for me. Yeah, I would say one idea would to look at look at ways to give back, look at things mm -hmm. to get involved with um, that involve community right so it, it could be you could join something like a rotary club there's different clubs that are doing things in the community that um you might that might interest you uh, meetup.com is a great thing if, if there's something you really love if you love hiking if you you have something in common with people that brings you friends mm -hmm. doing something that you love if it's a wine club if it's a book club all that stuff's on meetup.com, but just just be active and proactive about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't wait for it to happen by osmosis. Just be proactive about something you're doing. Um, networking meetings, uh, it could be for work, networking things, but just just go where there are commonalities, so things that you love that uh, put you amongst other people. And this goes right hand in hand with uh, Veronica's issue which is uh she says my biggest issue is trust if someone wants to be my friend i always assume there's an agenda i'm very guarded so mm -hmm. these go hand in hand because a lot of times because of the way we were programmed as witnesses we don't trust worldly people mm -hmm. we in our brain somehow some way we've always pushed them away from the time we were in grade school we were nice to people but there was always a wall, wall. right 
enough of a wall so you don't have to ask me about Christmas. Enough of a wall that you don't invite your kid, my kid, the, your kid's birthday party. Enough of a wall so mm -hmm. that you can get out of things. And that doesn't go away just because you leave the witnesses. You, you still can be like this. Witnesses are typically very nice people. Everybody loves them, but they don't know why they can't get close to them. And it, what was so funny is, is somebody, um, now I've been divorced for like 15 years, I think. But somebody messaged me, someone that wasn't a witness that, that we knew, me and my wife knew. And she was always frustrated that she couldn't get closer to my wife. Uh. Right? It's like, what, what was it with her? I know I would ask her for happy hour and all these different things. I said, she was never going to go with you. She always had an excuse. It was never that I don't want to go with you. Uh -huh. Always an excuse. I go, she was never going to go with you because you're not a witness. Right? Mm -hmm. So getting rid of that, it's hard. It's it's almost like the world, the word worldly is pretty equal to a racial slur. Yeah. <laughs> where we call people this over and over and over and it just puts them in this oh. light of distrust and you can't trust them and it's like someone someone being raised by a racist family that's not mm -hmm. going to just go away when you go to college yeah yeah you're go right go ahead yeah I, I was thinking too you know when you were saying um, I just lost my thought it was, it was kind of going back to the previous person oh, about the trust, about, you know, for trust to me, when you can't trust somebody, it means you don't trust yourself. Right. And that's something that I, you know, a lot of people sometimes may feel that it's an outside thing. No, it's, it's in, it's inside. And I think the reminder that I can really trust myself to make friends and have people in my life that are going to be meaning, the friendships are gonna be meaningful and good for me. I can really, really trust that, but you gotta believe it in here first, right? And then another thing is like you were saying with the other, to the previous person about getting active. One of the first things I did, the first things I did when I left, I volunteered. Yeah. I started food bank, child advocates. That was a really huge opportunity for me to meet all kinds of people and to see how people's lives are affected by certain situations, right? And trauma and kids. And so in that environment, I met other people who had the same idea that they wanted to volunteer because of these reasons. And so the common bonds would start. And then I could kind of sense, all right, do I want to go a step further outside this volunteer environment with this person? And then I go hang out with them and maybe they're a little bit different, but I can trust that I'm not going to have my boundaries broken because I am holding them, right? And if it doesn't resonate, the friendship or the interaction, that's fine. I just can say to myself, that was a good experience. I learned from it. I can trust myself for the next time I do this. I can feel what kind of interaction I'm having, but it's all in here. The trust starts in here. So that way people show up that we can trust them. If we feel like we can trust ourselves and we find trustworthy people. But don't you think that sometimes trust is because you have a fear of your naivety from being in that closed yeah. environment, you, you mm -hmm. do, you, especially for women, right? I mean, you just don't know how to move. Women that have been you're like this, you're like this. Well, they, they 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 know that their spidey senses is up. They they know how to move, but you know when you're coming from this sheltered environment, I think a lot of times you just don't trust that you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. With witnesses, you know what everybody thinks, right? You look at somebody, go, your hair's too long, your skirt's too short. You're you know <laughs> you know what a good witness is supposed to look like, right? But yeah. in the real world, and you have no no reference point. I think, I think a lot of times trust comes from that. A lack mm -hmm. of trust from that too. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, we're like, you were like babies when we come out of the organization, right? Mm -hmm. We're starting from scratch and some, some babies run right into everything. It's so fun to watch people do that. And I'm like, wow, they're having a lot of fun. And then some people pull back, mm -hmm. but I think it's part of the, the growth, right? 
And I think if you walk into it knowing that it's going to be a good experience beyond the JW, stepping out into the world, you make up your mind. That's what I did. I make up my mind because I'd left before when I was younger and I came back in because the world was crazy to me. It looked really crazy. When I was going to leave again, it was like, okay, this time I'm leaving and now I'm going to pay attention to the world. I'm going to pay attention to people. I'm going to pay attention to myself and I'm going to figure out how to navigate this world. And I did because I made the intention with myself how it was going to be first. Yeah. 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 Good advice. You guys got it. I know they have it. (laughs) Okay. We got Ella. Ella says she suffers from embarrassment. Mm. Felt humiliated as a witness and hated being different, not being part of social groups, holidays, birthdays, earnestly trying to preach to my friends because a speaker at the convention said school kids need to try it harder. Uh, need to try harder, even though it made me look foolish. Hearing people say in the corridor, did you know that girl is a Jehovah? As I walked by, we all heard that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even now, 20 years out, I don't like to talk about my JW upbringing because it's so embarrassing to me. If people ask me if I'm going to my parents for Christmas, instead of saying the truth, I'll just say not this year because I don't want to be identified as that girl. That's a Jehovah. Yeah, we all are called Jehovah's. <laughs> I I would I would say. I, I think you may have this almost like trauma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're attaching something to something that was a very un- unpleasant experience as a child. Um, but this is really a story in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, be okay with your journey of life. People are fascinated with people who lived a different life. They don't judge you. They're not laughing at you. People are fascinated. And be okay with your entire journey. Um, it, it's like people I know who did time. Right? They know they were a different person. When they were 19, they did something real stupid. And those people live more free when they say, yeah, I was young, I was dumb, I did some time. Sure. And and I can, I can just look at them and go, wow, you, you really changed. You, you must have been a totally different person at 19. This just happened to me. A friend of mine who is very successful. He's very successful in life. And we were talking about, I, I was joking about this one time that I had a, a traffic warrant and the cop threw me in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you say it is give you a warning, go go pay your warrant. No, this guy threw me in jail, and I had to stay in the jail overnight, right? Wow. <laughs> I could not remember anybody's number to come get me. Not wow. back in the day, you remembered everybody's number. I, I just remember my mom's number. I didn't freak her out. <laughs> wow. I was joking about this experience and, and how you know, it was a Saturday night. And I, I could feel everybody's energy. It's a real negative energy, the kind of people you're stuck in there with. And he, when my friend goes, you know, I did six years, right? Mm. Yeah, I did six years. And he's very candid about it because yeah. he knows he's not the knucklehead today that he was when he was 19 years old. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and there's a kind of respect you get when people are just open, an open book. And mm-hmm. he is much freer than the person that is trying to squash that knowledge, doesn't want anybody to know, and hopes nobody Googles his name. You know, yeah. then it's just this shame that you're trying to. No, he's just like, oh, that's where I was. You know, something happened mm-hmm. and I got involved with the wrong people. And, and you know, you could use it to, to help people. You know, the, the, the greatest speakers and the people that help people the most are the people that tell you, this is the journey I went through. This is where mm-hmm. I was. This is where I am. So, Ella, just, just, just embrace your experience. This, this mm-hmm. is life journey. Embrace all of it. They're not laughing at you. They're not. Kids, kids laugh. Kids poke fun at everything. When we're kids, kids make fun of everything. Yeah. But as adults, people are just curious. They want to know. You can just say, hey, you know, my parents, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't really celebrate that. And, and you'll be surprised. If somebody goes, you know what? You want to come over? How many? There are so many times, Debbie. Yes. I to being a witness, and somebody told me I was one. <laughs> and many times, or, or my 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 uh, my aunt's one, and it's an interesting conversation. But mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I have been on dates where it had nothing to do with it. I it happened twice. 
Yeah. Said, Shut up. She dropped her fork. I wasn't your witness. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just your journey. So let me. Yeah. Oh, you can just release that embarrassment. I mean, you know, as kids, we we didn't know any better. We're just following what our parents were telling us to do, what the organization was telling us to do. That's not part of who we are today, especially if we are out of it, right? And just, just I hate to use the word grace, but just give yourself some ease about feeling that embarrassment. Like, okay, you know what? I feel this embarrassment, but it's not really who I am. It's just not. And and the whole Christmas holiday thing. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't do anything Christmas for many years after I left. And the interesting is thing now is like I get so many invitations to Christmas because people know of my background, even though I'm not sad about it. But they're just like they don't want me to be alone. And I'm like, I can't come to everybody's Christmas party, but I will try over it's over time. It just has a way of coming full circle if you allow it. Right. I think that embarrassment, and I almost feel that when you read that about from her, I could feel it in my belly. It's like, oh, beautiful soul, you can release that. You are a kid. That is not who you are today. Yeah. And we all had that, but we did not know as kids what we were doing. Yeah. Those kids, they, those are kids. Those are kids. But adults, they are not laughing at you. Yeah. They're not. They're like, wow. If they know about the witnesses, they're like, you you survive that that's how people react to me when i tell them yeah i remember going yeah. to my reunion it probably was my 20 year reunion or something like that and and, and a couple of kids said that i just rodney was a joke <laughs> and they remember me not celebrating yeah. birthdays or sitting in the corner and we just laughed about it because this is not who i am today so uh, just release it. It's part of your journey, but it doesn't define who you are today. The, mm-hmm. the more you have a reaction to it, the more you're letting the past define your present, and you don't want to do that. So we're, we're going to stop it here. we got more. We'll do a, a part two. It's we'll already stop. almost an hour? Well, we are what? at... Well, it, it, it's kind of odd because we're. if I go an hour, we're still going to have more left. <laughs> 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 it, it's an odd... I think this is a good time to end it. So we got a okay. full second episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what? What? A, this, was, this was fun. I think we should do this more often and just, you know, address things since people have the same issues mm-hmm. um, going on. A lot of people are getting answers um, that they probably would have asked the same same questions or shared the same things. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they need to know. I mean, every ex witness that walks away from this, every witness that walks away, I think y'all just need to know how amazing you are to begin with that you have made the step outside of something like that. And give yourself a big pat on the back, right, for the steps you've taken, even though some of them have been really, really hard. You're pretty amazing for what you've been doing. Courageous, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are so many people still in that religion that are faking it, that are not earnest about what they do. They, they uh. don't have the courage that all of you have to mm-hmm. take the lumps. It's hard yeah. because you, you do go through things and you had the courage to do it. So um, you had the courage to leave, just have the courage to finish the journey. Yes. All right. And you're not alone. You're awesome. Not alone. awesome. All right, so you'll see us post with me and Debbie will figure out when the best time is to do it. It might be this time next week, but we'll figure that out. But until then, everyone, um, go out there and and live your best life. That's all we can do is live the best life of what's in front of us now. And we will see you next time.